everybody. This is Jake Senziano, host of Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father of six, the best-selling author, the G-Daddy, Gino Barbaro. Gino, how's it going? Mr. Stenziano, I missed you, brother. You haven't Dude, been on the show been, for a few weeks. Man. It's been yeah. a few weeks, right? So, hey, let's, let's break it down, man. We got 73 tickets left for Multifamily Mastery, October 6th and 7th. It's going to be a big room. She cut us off yesterday. She said there only can be 350 people. You got 73 tickets left. G-Dad, who's going to be there? What's going on with this thing? Well, we followed up from last year, Mr. Stenziano. Buy right, manage right, and finance right. That's what the multifamily framework is. We've got some amazing speakers. We're going to be presenting something called multifaceted multifamily, which I think our guest is really aspiring to and really has. It's an awesome presentation. We have Jay Scott from Bigger Pockets. We have Kim Taylor there. We have Reed Goosens, who's a syndicator the there. Yeah, we've got Dave Zook, who's just uh, he's a he's a he's a beast awesome investment guy. Um, we've just got a great lineup of people who are doing it. I, I said it offline before, we got the gurus. We got the guys who are gurus, but they're all doing it. And that's the most important thing. They're doing it in this market, what we're doing. So we want to teach people what's going on, how to you know, introduce them to the framework and how they can get to multifamily. Cost seg, property management, you got uh, financing Paul Peebles, mm -hmm. uh, you got you got Sumrock coming. It's going to be, it's going to be a, it's gonna a, be awesome. a great event, no yep. doubt. So, Getting back to today, today's guest is Jay Connor. In the beginning of his real estate career, Jay was dependent on the banks for financing. I know that feeling. <laughs> but now he relies on a different method. He now has the ability to raise millions in a short period of time without the banks. Gee, Dad, this sounds like a guy that's taking control of his destiny. That's right, my friend. He's, he's, he's manning up here. So without further ado, Jay, welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Jake and Gino, all the way here from Moorhead City, North Carolina. My lands, I love you guys' energy. Thank you for having me Man, on. He's, he's, he's one state over. I can give this guy a high five right now, right? Something like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> So, so man, I, I, we, we love the energy. We love you. We love your energy. Tell us about your real estate company today and how everything changed when the banks cut you off. Wow. I tell you what, it's the biggest blessing in disguise that I've ever had in business was when I was cut off from the bank. So what does business look like today? Well, um, we're primarily uh, doing single family houses today. I did my first um, uh, major, I say major commercial project 20 years ago, shopping center in Newport, North Carolina. <clears throat> it was pretty fun this past, um, this is like four months ago, the final mortgage payment of $22,350 a month was paid off. So that's baby's free and clear. Oh, nice. That's what you call nice passive income. But anyway, uh, we do about two to three houses a month here in a very, very small area. A total target market of only 40,000 people, which means if we can do it in a small market, anybody can do it anywhere. But the average, what's different about our business is the average profits per single family house are $64,000 per house. Mm. And so, um, again, two to three transactions a month, but run those numbers and those numbers work out okay. So... I've been doing it for 15 years uh, here in this small market. And uh, let's see, it was nine and a half years ago, nine years ago this past February, I called up, um, I called up my banker and his name was Steve. The operative word is, was Steve. <laughs> called up Steve and I, and guys, I had had this conversation many times with Steve. I called him up, I said, I got two houses under contract want to close in about three weeks. Now these two houses represented over 50, over $100,000 combined in total profits and uh, equity. And I, you know, told him where the houses were located and the funding required and Steve went quiet on the other end of the phone, which is never a good sign. Right. And so Steve cleared his throat and he said, Jay, I'm sorry, but the bank has collapsed your line of credit. I said, what do you mean? I knew that didn't sound good. And he said, well, we're just not loaning money out to real estate investors anymore. And you know, I know you guys remember what was going on in 2008, 2009. I mean, it's like the spigot was turned off overnight. And so I asked myself, well, what am I going to do? So I could choose to quit or I could choose to find another way. So I was introduced to this wonderful world of private money, not hard money, 
private money. And in less than 90 days, I attracted and raised $2,150,000 in private money. And that's been growing ever since. And so because of that experience of being cut off from the banks, I have not missed out on a deal in nine and a half years because I did not have the money. So Jay, let's rewind. Why real estate? Why did you get into real estate? I was born and raised around real estate. My father, Wallace Connor, up until the late eighties, had the largest manufactured housing company in the nation. So I was raised around affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And I knew if I ever uh, got out of manufactured housing, I wanted to uh, be a flipper. I wanted to buy and sell single family houses. And uh, what really triggered it was back in 1993, of course, I was still in the manufactured housing business, but a good friend of ours in Newburn, North Carolina, didn't have the money to build his and his wife's house. And at that time, I was, you know, busting as hard as I could to make $2,900 on a single wide mobile home. And in less than 90 days, they flipped the house and made like $25,000. That was in 93. And I said, if I ever get out of the mobile home business, you know, I want to do real estate. But really today, why do I do real estate? It's uh, for a couple of three reasons. Uh, I mean, obviously the, the profits are very, very uh, substantial, but you can automate this business to where you don't have to be working in the business, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week. You can automate the business uh, like I'm sure you guys have, I have, to where I'm actually in the business probably five hours a week, got an amazing team. And so it's a business that you can scale uh, and automate and you know it's it's all about the wealth and freedom and what it allows you to do as far as in your own life your family's life and making a difference in other people's lives we touched lots of people's lives that's it man spot on okay i heard all the love all the rainbows and sunshine now what do you <laughs> hate about and rainbows man every you, day man he's yeah, spot but, on with that <laughs> but what do you hate about real estate i mean is there anything you really despise about and say oh man i wish i wasn't in this business uh, what do I not like about real estate? About the only thing that comes to mind is learning lessons the hard way in the past. <laughs> that's what I don't like about real estate. Of course, you know, I guess that's true in any business, but you know, I wish, I wish I had gotten a mentor a lot sooner than I did. Mm -hmm. I heard y'all talking about your event you got coming up right around the corner. I mean, you know, I'm telling you, people, you, you're either going to invest your time in getting education or you're going to get your education another way that you don't plan on getting it, which is like going to a seminar you didn't plan on going to. Mm -hmm. So, Like one of my biggest mistakes I made when I started out was I, the market was so hot, um, you know, 15 years ago and, and leading right up to 2008 and 2009. And I remember three properties distinctly that I bought with the intention of flipping but I wasn't smart enough at the time to run the numbers to look and see, hey, look, if I can't flip these babies and the market turns, the, the rent will not cover the carrying cost. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so yeah, what did I not like about real estate? Learning that lesson the hard way. Don't invest in real estate unless the underlying, unless the rent will cover your carrying costs, even if you intend to flip it. So Jay, let me ask you, you started a long time ago. Were there programs out there? Was there any mentors out there at the time? So maybe did you make that mistake or are you seeking people or there's just nobody out there or no programs out there at the time when you started? Oh, I'm sure there were programs out there, but uh, you know, I didn't do it the right way. I read a couple of books. I relied on my manufactured housing experience. Now, don't get me wrong. The first six years were pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I made that those that, those how those uh, condos I bought on the beach made that mistake like two years into it. But um, yeah, I'm you know I just wasn't seeking where I needed to seek to get my education at the time. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't feel like I needed it. But uh, you know, uh, like you guys, y'all have got a ton of students. Uh, you know, I train people on single family houses as well. And I tell students, you know, the biggest advice I can give you is get your education, you know, because you're going to get it either way. Just get it the easy way. I, I agree. Well, so what kind of deals are you doing right now? Yeah. So the single family houses, the entry level price point on a first time home buyer is about $150,000 around here in my target area. Um, the medium pr uh, price points, uh, 225,000. So, 
even today after being in the business for 15 years, my focus on the deals I do are entry level price point because after all, that's where the largest pool of buyers are for single family houses is first time home buyers. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I sell, I sell quite a few of them on rent to own. That's the most profitable way to sell a single family house is we sell it on rent to own. Uh, it came the bank. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. And um, so, you know, they don't negotiate on price. Uh, we got a fantastic uh, credit repair team that helps them get ready for a mortgage. And you know, most people that buy rent to own do not cash out if they're left to their own devices, but that's not my business model. Mm -hmm. My business model is these people want to own. That's their intent. So, you know, we take the uh, non-refundable option fee that of course will be applied to their down payment, closing cost, purchase price, et cetera. But 80% of our written owned people actually do cash out because we hold their hand and lead them to the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So Jake, I want you to dive into our multifaceted and multifamily real quick for Jay. And then I want Jay to describe his business model and tell the listeners how his business model is multifaceted also. You do that for me, bro? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So basically we, we try to control the entire process and I think you're attempting to do the same thing. And you know, we have a management company in place. So we buy a large scale multifamily, say 150, 300 units, whatever it may be. We put the management in place. We run the management. And if there's like construction, we're doing that construction end of it. We're also finding our own deals. We've started to actually, uh, a brokerage. So we're actually going to be finding our own deals where if we can't buy it, we're going to sell it. So everything that's, that's basically involved in our process and we're holding it long term, we're, we're controlling the entire process. Right. And then there's the education arm of it as well. So if we can help people that way, we do it. So there's really, you know, four broader entities all based around the multifamily home. So it sounds like you have multiple entities based around the single family home and also a larger financing component. That's correct. That's correct. So, you know, there's four pillars to my buying and selling business besides my training company. And the four pillars are finding, funding, flipping, and automating. So on the finding, you know, one, one thing that we do is uh, my wife, Carol Joy and I, 15 years ago, we started out putting together our own foreclosure business of locating these opportunities to help people get back on their feet before other real estate investors even know they exist. So uh, she put together the tracking mechanism. We don't rely on online sources even today because we actually have a courthouse assistant that goes to the courthouse twice a week, updates all the files, and we actually track every notice of default. Some states it's a summons but we tracked everyone until the file is dismissed. And you know, sometimes, I know you all don't believe this, but real estate investors get a bad rap, like we're out here to take advantage of people or well, something. We're the only honest guys out there, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> give me a break. And so what we do when people, so there's, there's two major components of our foreclosure system. We track them um, and then we have, I have an eight letter direct mail campaign that gets a crazy 57% response rate, which anybody in direct mail knows that's unbelievable, but the message to the market is perfect. But when people respond to our marketing, we actually, one of the first questions we ask them is, do you want to keep your home? And if they do, of course we disclose, we're not, uh, we can't give legal advice, but we talk to them about, you know, have you talked to your lender about deferment programs and et cetera, but we help a lot of people. So a lot, all of our deals, not all of our deals, but a lot of our deals uh, revolve around four people winning. When we buy a house, most of the time there was stress involved. We relieve them of stress, relieve them of debt. And then when we fund it, private money, my lands right now, Carol Joy and I've got 47 private lenders, individuals that fund our deals and we move from house to house to house. So the private lenders win big time because they get high rates of return safely and securely. In fact, that's what I'm known as across the nation is the private money authority, helping real estate investors get funding regardless of their credit, regardless of their experience, regardless of their verification of income. So the private lenders win. Then those people that buy on rent to own win. And then of course I win real estate investor wins by orchestrating, uh, you know, those deals. So that's, that's the overview of the process. Find, fund, flip, automate. 
when did you come up with the process? When did the light dawn on you? Because Jake and I, with the multifaceted multifamily, over the last 18 months, we realized that we were controlling a lot of the aspects. We started the syndication arm of the business, which is the raising of the money. And we're like, wow, if they don't want the education, they don't want to learn, but they want to invest with us here, they can invest with us. And you know, the property management drives the whole thing because we're vertically integrated, we're controlling the process. When did it dawn upon you that you had this machine, this massive machine going on? Probably not until about five years ago. Five years ago. And then how did you set it up? How did you say to yourself, wow, I can do this? Because there's a lot of work involved in this because you're saying five hours a week, but I'm sure there were those 70, 80 hour weeks putting this thing together. Laying the foundation, right? Learning the systems, right? Oh my word, I remember maybe seven years ago, no longer than that, longer than that, maybe about nine years ago, I remember Carol Joy and I were at Lowe's Home Improvement at quarter to nine one night, picking out blinds and knickknacks for the kitchen and the bathroom to get a house stage. And I looked at her, I said, what in the world are we doing at Lowe's Home Improvement (laughs) at 845 at night? I said, what happened to us running the business? It feels like, and it was, the business was running us. So I set out on a mission to automate everything, to replace myself. I learned from my dad, dictate, delegate, and disappear. (laughs) And then, of course, <laughs> <I love that. laughs> and then of course show back up when they least expect you so i set out on this mission to uh, automate everything we started using virtual assistants to help us mm-hmm. uh, also got a full-time local assistant to oversee all the the buyer leads and the seller leads coming in and so it took about a year to get our processes automated to where i could actually step back and and be the visionary instead of feel like, you know, I was running around with my hair on fire all the time. Are you doing EOS? EOS. I'm not sure I know what EOS is. Man, you sound like uh, we, we, we're doing this EOS stuff. It's called, this book called Traction. It's an entrepreneurial it's, operating system. And it's oh, like, wait a minute. I think I just heard about it at one of my mastermind groups I'm a member of. Yeah. It's like you're, you're, you're uh, verbatim EOSing on us right now, which is great. So, hey, I want to get this right. Dictate, delegate, and disappear. You got it. Be it right? I love That's it. That's what I say. Yes. What'd you say? Yeah. The Be triple it. D's. Yes. That's That's called right. a, it's called the, the, the triple D man. Triple D man. Or, I love it. Or at your upcoming event, you can teach the triple D process. I like we that. Might, we might get in, the, in trouble in this sensitive environment that we're in with the triple D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want Jake to jump into the I'm a mentality because this is the opposite of the you I'm were just, He was just living the I'm a So, you know, it's great. We go back and we, we're starting out. Same thing, man. I was running to like pick up an air conditioning unit or whatever. And it was just, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do everything. And then all of a sudden you're like, you, you can't do everything and there's no way to scale. So that's a classic example of you being at Lowe's at 8.45 p.m. at night trying to do it all, but you're actually not, you're, you're preventing yourself from growing because you're like, oh, I got to do it all. I got to do it all. No, that's the wrong mentality, folks. You're not going to get anywhere if you try to do it all. You got to take people with you. And- yeah, I, I want to I share a concept that goes right with what you just said, uh, Jake, and that is my light bulb on this did not did not light up until I don't know maybe about seven years ago. I just never thought about it this way, and here's what I'm talking about. And boy, I want your viewers and listeners to get this. And here's the deal: as long as I, whenever I'm doing an activity, it doesn't matter what it is. Whenever I'm doing an activity that I can pay somebody else, let's say, fifteen dollars an hour. Whenever I'm doing that activity that I can pay somebody else $15 an hour to do, while I'm doing that activity, I am earning $15 an hour. I just put put the value of my time at $15 an hour if I'm doing an activity that pays and earns $15 an hour. So when I set out to automate those years ago, I took an inventory throughout the day of what am I doing right now? And I came up with this quote that I say all the time, successes are scheduled. Successes are scheduled. And so my practice is I do a brain dump. I do a brain dump on my yellow pad, my yellow pad every night before I go to bed. And then early in the morning when I get up, then I take that brain dump and then I prioritize it. So anyway, 
be aware of what you're doing with your time because unfortunately until people um, actually captivate their time and, and can be in control of their time, then the tide takes them through the day. And you know, how many times have we in the past thought to ourselves, you get to the end of the day and you think to yourself, why didn't I get anything done I wanted to do? You know, I was, you know, I was doing all this other stuff. So take control of your time and that ties right into this automation process. I think a great best practice would be when you're doing that brain dump, this is for the listeners out there. If you drew a line down the middle and you put all the $15 activities that you did that day on the one side and then drew a, a curve to get them into the other column and work on ways to, to do that and start displacing those into the, the outsource column or the employee column, I think you're going you know, to scale very quickly, especially if you're in that, you know, that growth phase that everyone goes through when you're, start, you're doing the IMA and it's time to shift. Right. So I think that would be a great best practice. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to call Jay Connor. I'm going to let Jake call Jay Connor, uncle Jay. Cause, uh, cause Jay, uncle is, Jay. <laughs> cause Jay is speaking Jake's language. Cause Jake is Mr. Sunday morning play. My, I get, I get emails, uh, texts at eight 30 in the morning. What are we doing this whole week? So he schedules out his entire week on Sunday morning and, and it's a black sheet. He'll show you we're, 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 we're writing kind of guys. That's what we do. And that is like one of the most important things. And also, on that column, on that brain dump, maybe put your successes too, because we always beat ourselves up. What do we do great for the week? We have Monday morning huddles every Monday morning. We want to share our successes, so that'll motivate us and inspire us to do better. So don't only worry about what you're supposed to do. What did you do that was kick-ass? Because at the end of the week, five days, I'm sure you've done a lot. Like us, this is, this is a win for us right now. This is a successes podcast. We're having a great show. Put that down in your success. Motivate it and share it with other people. Don't only put down what you got to do. Put down what you did. So that's just a tip. My, one of my. Gee, Dad, you live in kick-ass, though. When you <laughs> operate and you live in kick-ass mode, I mean, it's just. But you got to remind yourself because life takes a beat at you. You know, times you go to bed late at night. Oh, good wife, shots. Oh. You know, yeah. So just just celebrate those successes with other people and plan your day. I, I love that. I mean, if you plan what plan to fail is failing to plan, whatever that saying is. And it's really important and it cannot be, you don't want life to happen to you. That's the problem. Most of us just go through life not thinking about life, not planning for it. So those are really wise words. From start to people. drive the ship, you know, that's right. So get out um, of the back seat and start driving. <laughs> how, uh, Jay, how did you start getting private lenders? You know, you said 90 days, you raised all that money. You were in the business, but what tips could you give the listeners on how to start looking for private money and how to start that business? <clears throat> sure. So there are three primary categories on where to get private money from individuals. The first category is what I call your own warm market. Who do you know who's on your cell phone, who's on your email list, who's your Facebook friends? If you're over 50 years old, you still got a Christmas card list. So I teach my students to do just what I did, and that is to identify in your own warm market your top 100 potential private lenders out of, your own con out of your own contacts. And a lot of my students sometimes will say, hey, everybody in my warm market is broke. I don't know anybody, you know, with money. Well, number one, I, number one, I don't believe that. Right. Mm -hmm. But no, I go, think, go find some new friends. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the third category. That's the, sorry, third sorry. Category. the second category is uh, existing private lenders. Again, I'm not talking hard money. I'm not talking brokers. Um, you know, a lot of times when people hear private money, they're actually thinking or the person that's talking about it's talking about hard money brokers. So for example, Myself and all my students that I teach, we pay our private lenders 8%, 8%. Whereas, you know, hard money, which is broker money, uh, is going to be national average 14%, you know, with four points and extension fees of two points. So that's going to be averaging 20% the first year on hard money. Uh, but private money with the individuals is a whole different deal. So anyway, existing private lenders, I started doing that the hard way. I hired my uh, attorney's paralegal to actually search public records, looking for individual names that had mortgages in our area. And over three months, I only came up with one person. So uh, seven and a half years ago, I put together the private, our private lender data feed that searches public records every month across the nation. And we pull in about 12,000 deals that individuals have funded. And so we search by zip code and et cetera. And then the third category that I teach is, as you just said, Jake, get some new friends. So I teach people where to go <clears throat> to network. 
And that's the civic groups. I mean, the Rotary Club, Business Networking International, becoming involved in the Chamber of Commerce. So, excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> so anyway, on the warm market, I put together this 16 minute audio called Stress Free Investing. I've recorded that thing for over a thousand of my students now. <clears throat> and what it does is it leads to a one-on-one -on -one appointment for a potential private lender to sit down with you and actually go over the private lending program. <clears throat> but this is not, the way I do private money. <clears throat> and in fact, I got a free online class I'll offer your listeners from, before we finish up <clears throat> on the five steps of getting private money. <clears throat> but it's not about chasing or begging. It's about, in fact, do you know guys, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, excuse me for a second, but do you know the, these years that I've been attracting private money, I have never asked anybody for money. Never. Not the first time. So, well, Jay, how do you get all that? How do you get all that private money if you haven't asked for it, right? Because I simply make my program available. I let the tools do the work. I send the audio by um, MP3 on email. I'll hand them a CD. I'll send them the YouTube link uh, by text. Let them listen to the audio. And that audio does not try to sell them on my private lending program. <clears throat> it just raises or uh, it makes them aware of what private money is. Mm -hmm. And then that leads to the one-on-one. -on -one. I've got 47 private lenders. By the way, self-directed IRAs are very, very important. In my, in my world, self-directed IRAs, over half of our private money has come from individuals that have got retirement funds and they never even knew anything about self-directed IRAs until we told them. So in answer to your question, those are the three categories. We make it easy on uh, getting the information out fast to your network and then, um, you know, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, explaining how the program works and then um, it's all about the attraction factor, to tell you the truth. Get the word out and it comes to you. What's the best way to get the word out to potential private lenders that you're offering high rates of return? That audio, that, that, audio. 16, that 16 minute audio. Um, and in fact, I mean, in fact, it's, it's a very soft, now, now, you know, if you're in, if you're in a networking, you know, if you're in the civic group, I mean, here's a casual conversation, really short script. Really short script. Here we go. So, Gino, let's say that you know you and I have have met at a um, you and I have met at a uh, a social event or whatever. So, you know, when I'm when somebody meets somebody for the first time, what do most people ask you? Well, they ask you, "What do, what do you, you do? do? What do you do?" So, you know, let's say you ask me, "What do I do, Gino?" We've met, and I say, "Well, I'm a real estate investor." And the first thing you're thinking in your mind is, that's nice. He's rich. I could, I could care less. <laughs> you know, what's in it for me? You know? So wouldn't it be really cool when somebody asks you, what do you do? Wouldn't it be cool to answer that question in a way that would arouse curiosity, lead to an interesting conversation, and perhaps some attract some private money for you. Let's so, hear the elevator pitch, man. Come on, you, you got me chomping at the bit here. So here's the deal. When somebody ever asks me, what do I do? Or they ask my students, what do you do? Here's the answer. Put your seatbelt on. Oh, buckle it in, buckle it, lock it down, Gina. Come down. on. Here's the answer. I teach private lenders how to get higher rates of return than they can get anywhere else. I shut up and you know what? they don't have a clue what I just said. <laughs> it's like you'll get responses. So let me repeat it. It's simple. I teach private lenders how to get higher rates of return than they get anywhere else. So first of all, they don't know what I said. And it's, it's hard to sort of like keep your mouth shut and just don't say anything. Mm -hmm. And they'll come back with, what did you say? Because you see, I framed myself as a teacher. Yep. Okay? I said, private lenders, they don't know what that is. And then, but they did hear higher rates of return than they can get anywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. So that answer naturally leads to a conversation about what's private money, what's private lending, et cetera. So it arouses curiosity. And uh, because if you answer the question, you know, I'm a real estate investor or, I, you know, I develop commercial real estate or whatever, the likelihood of that conversation advancing forward 
is slim to none, and slim just got up and left. Mm -hmm. I like that. So it's yeah. you, Jake. It's all about the empowering questions. He's leading other people to ask open-ended questions, and that's that's the key to uh, actually starting a conversation. Talk to me, bro. Two things. He's got the arousal factor. <laughs> all right. He's got the arousal factor, and he's also got people wanting more. You know, it's just it's 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 genius, right? Take the next step, man. That's <laughs> it. Well, yeah, and and, and I'll, I'll give. I know you're probably running short on time. I'll give another little short script. So someone in your warm market that you already know, that you already have, you know, some kind of relationship with, here's a powerful little script. This can take place over the telephone. And by the way, I go into all this detail on the, uh, on the free online class, but this can take place on the telephone or it can take place in person. And so Jake, let's say, you and I have been friends, you know, we know each other. I call you up. I say, Hey Jake, how's it going? Great. Jay, how you doing? Doing good. Uh, I hadn't talked to you a little bit. How the kids, kids are great. They say, Jake, as you may or may not know, I'm investing in real estate these days. And actually I'm taking advantage of the uh, tidal wave of foreclosures that's still going on. Jake, what I'm getting ready to tell you, very few people know about, because quite frankly, the only way you can find out about this is if I tell you, in fact, this is by referral only. And so the deal is, Jake, I got a program that is paying higher rates of return than you can probably get anywhere else, but it may not be for you. Unless you answer yes to the following question, there's no need for me to give you any more information. That's the takeaway. I mean, that's the takeaway, by the way. And the question is, Jake, do you have investment capital that's not giving you a high rate of return safely and securely? If I wasn't Jake, I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, actually, there's a real part, an important part of that uh, little question I need to add to. So, Jake, do you have investment capital or retirement funds not giving you a high rate of return safely and securely? And then I'll do something that's hard for me to do. Shut up. I'm talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'll let Jake answer the question. Now, a lot of my students will say, Jay, I'm not, you know, I know people with some money or they got retirement funds, but I'm not comfortable asking that question to them. I'm intimidated. So here's a, here's another way to wrap that question. Uh, in fact, this is the way I got my first private money, $250,000. I went up to this gentleman. I'd known him pretty much all my life. And I said, I know, you know, a lot of people. I know you've been in the business community a long time. I know that you're involved in the rotary club, et cetera. And I've got a new program that's now, pay and very high rates of return. I've now opened up my real estate business to people I know and trust. That's a powerful little phrase right there. I've now opened up my real estate investing business to people I know and trust, and I'm paying very high rates of return safely and securely. So when you run across someone that's not happy with their returns, would you refer them to me? And then I shut up. Guess what the gentleman said to me? He said, well, I am. Mm -hmm. what kind of rates of return are you talking about? <laughs> See, I'm just, I didn't ask him, him personally. I asked him to spread the word is mm -hmm. all I said. He said, what kind of rates of return are you talking about? And I said, well, uh, it's flexible. Depends on the deal. What sounds high to you? And at this time, CDs were paying about 3%. Did you know, Gino and Jake, the average CD, 12-month CD is now 0.59% in the nation. Anyway, at the time, it was about 3%. He said, well, I don't know. Me and, uh, me and my wife, we're getting about 3%. He says, I don't know. Maybe 5 or 6% would be high. And I said, well, I can't pay 5 or 6%, but I can pay 8%. And he said, put me down for $250,000. So I didn't ask him for money. You know, that was exactly what he said. Put me down for $250,000. Um, and, you know, I didn't ask him for money. I asked him to spread the word. And of course, and he did. I mean, he was interested. And of course, he spread the word. That's another thing about this world of private money. Um, once you get a, just a little handful of private lenders, I mean, the, the word's going to spread. I mean, my lands, just like two months ago, I got referred this guy. I, I, this gentleman was referred to me. And the conversation over the telephone was maybe 10 minutes. I got $300,000 pledged. We did our first couple of deals. He called me up, um, what's it, last week? 
Now all of a sudden he's got another couple of hundred thousand. They always have more than they tell you. <laughs> okay. So the referrals start coming and you know, again, there's no chasing, there's no begging. It's all about just getting the word out and, and attracting it. And then Before, performing, right? Yep. I'm sorry. No. And then performing. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Perform. And here's another big thing when you get, and I don't ask the private lenders to sign anything committing their funds. I mean, if I do, I'm just sort of telling them indirectly, I don't trust you. So I get a verbal pledge, a verbal pledge. And here's a big secret. Deploy the funds very quickly because it will disappear on you if you don't. Ask me how I know. So, <laughs> how do you know? because I didn't uh, put some money to work that was pledged to me some years ago and they found another place to put it. Mm -hmm. So put mm -hmm. the money to work, put the money to work. And I'll tell you one thing I teach uh, as well. And I practice the money comes first. I mean, you know, I've got some friends that teach, go get a deal under contract. The money will show up. I'm sorry. I don't want the stress of uh, putting earnest money on a, on a house and I have no idea where the funding's coming from, you know? Um, and of course, you know, we, I, you know, we talk about creative financing, seller financing, subject to the existing note, lease purchase, all that. But at the end of the day, the majority of sellers, even for sale by owners are going to require all the funding and all the money. Jake, before we go into the short answers, I just want to recap for everybody and the golden nuggets that I got out of this. So the first thing is Jay likes to posture up typical sales technique where he's posturing up and he's showing that he's the expert in the space. And by doing his training, he's going to teach you how to do that because that's the most important thing in sales that you're an expert in what you're doing and you're able to convey and listen to people. It's all about listening and asking those empowering questions. And if you don't know how to do that, go on his platform, learn how to do that. The second thing is it's really all about the networking and the meetups because people ask us, well, where's the money? Create your own meetup. Go to the Rotary Club. Get involved in a, in a RIA or where, whatever it is. Create your own. Uh, Put yourself around guys you know, that you want to be around that are interested in the stuff that you're right. in and also have opportunities to help you financially or with deals, whatever it is. Build that network, no doubt. I, I got so many of the golden nuggets, but I think the next one is what we're doing with the syndication. If you're going to look, start raising money, start raising money yesterday because you need to make substantive relationships, start growing that base, start talking to people. So when the opportunity like Arcad in the richest man in Babylon shows yes. up, you're ready, bro. You, it's, it's, you're lucky. Jay's lucky because he's got all his money and he found the deal. No, he's not lucky. He started working hard and luck will show up because he started out with the job. So that's what we've been doing with our syndication. We were pledging a lot of capital. We looking for deals, but we started months ago because it's a lot of hard work. This is not easy. It's fun, but there's a lot of work that goes into it. And it's not just being a slick salesman. It's actually offering opportunities and listening to people and giving them what they want. People want higher rates of return. Can you give that to them? Yes. They don't care if you're a real estate investor. People ask me what I do. I have a podcast. I help people buy multifamily. They don't care that I own 900 units. They want to know how I did it. That's a different story, but they don't want to know that I own 900 units because that's of no value to them. I can continue to go on, Jake, but um, I think that's the golden nuggets that I've gotten. I want you to answer the short questions. And then well, you well, one other thing too I want to talk about is you know, what he went through in the financial crash, that's why it's so important, especially in our space, when you're buying large multifamily buildings to get long-term fixed rate financing in place. So if things do turn, you're not sitting there saying, shit, what do I do now? Right. That's why we're, that's the finance rate portion, get long-term low, you know, cost, low interest rates on, on long-term financing. It's, it's so important. I took that love the dictate, delegate and disappear. I wrote that down. I'm going to be using that one. Um, Jay, what is your best habit for success? Something that you do on a, a either a daily basis, weekly basis. This is stuff that I love actually getting in your brain, finding out what makes you tick and the things that you do to ensure success every day. Absolutely. So I learned this from Hal Elrod. Okay. So uh, the miracle morning. Mm -hmm. And so here's the morning practice. There's an acronym called SAVERS. And here it is. I mean, when I, when I have shared this with my friends, this number one thing has the most dramatic impact on their life, not just success in business, but their entire life, the relationships. S stands for silence. This takes 60 minutes in the morning. There is a way to do it six minutes, but the best way is 60 minutes. So first silence, which can be meditation, prayer, etc. That goes for about five minutes. The A stands for affirmations. 
which are actually written down the night before. That takes about five minutes. The V is visualization as to what you want to see your success of uh, being. The E is exercise for 20 minutes. Stairmaster is my preferred way. R is for reading, which takes about 10 minutes. And then the S is for scribing, which is journaling. That 60 minutes in the morning will revolutionize your life. I just can't get with the journaling. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> down with everything else. And I still haven't read the damn book yet, but I feel like- Well, I hey, look, well let, let me tell you, let me give you a suggestion on the journaling because I had a, I had a block there to say, well, what am I gonna journal about? Write the nuggets down of what you learned in your 10 minutes from reading the 10 minutes prior. Or listen, because Jake doesn't read either, so. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, listen. Well, it's the same thing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, yeah. you, you audible, so you listen. Audible exactly. is the new reading, all right? Yes. <laughs> I like um, it. What would you have done differently when starting out? What would I have done differently? Uh, well, I alluded to that when we first started the show, and that is, uh, when you're getting into multifamily, like you know, you all are a uh, single family real estate investing, get a mentor to work with, get the right training, you know, learn from someone that's already made the mistakes uh, right up front. Don't wait like I did. What a, what you just mentioned the miracle morning. What about a book recommendation? Oh my word. So uh, the, the book that had the biggest impact on my life, overall, besides the Bible, of course, is University of Success by Og Mandino. Uh, it's set up into like semesters, but it's all about personal development. And when I was 24 years, the principles are still just as relevant today as they were when I first read it in 1984. And when I come across someone that is stuck, um, you know, life is not going the way they want to, when they do University of Success, it'll turn them around. Man, you, you got me really like pumped up right now because are you uh, you like Jeffrey Gittimer? Have you ever read any of his stuff? Oh my word, Jeffrey! You know, lives right here in North Carolina in Charlotte, so, and yeah. I've got every one of his books. So when I I remember because I started out in sales and uh, was oh, like you know reading all of Gittimer's stuff, I loved it. I remember he had this reading list, and I saw this, and I thought it was OG Mandino. I thought I didn't know it was Og, and you said that I'm like oh, I've heard that. So I, I was like, it's the OG. He's the original gangster. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's Og Mandino. What was the book, though? Because I ne actually never got to any of Og's books. But what was, oh, the, yeah. one? Smart dude. What yeah. was the one you recommended? Yeah, University of Success. If it's good enough for Gittimer, it's good enough for me, okay? Wow. Bottom line. Absolutely. What project are you excited about right now? My new podcast. <laughs> oh, what is it? Let us know, man. What is it? So, uh, so I launched I launched my my podcast about two months ago, and it's called Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor, and I'm an E R C O N N E R, and uh, subtitles the Jay Connor Show. So um, I don't have thirty five thousand downloads a month like some folks I know, but uh, <laughs> you will. You'll, you'll blow right past this. That's right. That's right. Uh, but anyway, uh, I would. Um, <laughs> When I get up and going real good, I, I'd love to have you guys back on my show as a guest. I'll get back in touch with you in a few months. Sounds good. Sounds good. So what's the next step? How can folks get a hold of you? What, uh, what else you got going on? Sure. So I've got a free online class uh, for your viewers and listeners. Uh, it's called Where to Get the Money Now. So it's the five steps on how to go from zero funding to learning exactly how I got over $2 million in less than 90 days. And here's the uh, URL. It's uh, jakeandgino.com forward slash private money, all in lowercase. And uh, your viewers and listeners can go there and, um, and uh, you know, attend the free online class. It's on demand. Very cool. Mr. Stenziano, I have to jump in real quick. I want to thank Jay for being on here for a couple of reasons. I thought we were going to get a guy who was going to talk about single family homes and fixing and flipping. And what this did to me was it revolutionized how people should start syndicating and raising money for multifamily because it's just, it's over. It can be across all spectrums. That's the first thing. And the second thing is he just reaffirms uh, the multifaceted aspect of it. The third thing I think he reaffirms putting systems in your business. If a guy who's at Lowe's at 8.45 at night or a guy here who's washing dishes or a guy there who's using a chainsaw can do it, anybody can do it. You just need to have that aha moment and be aware, right? Be cognizant of our, our lifestyle is supposed to be dictating our business. Our big the business is not supposed to be dictating our lifestyle. And that's what Jay has done in his and that's what you've done and that's what I've 
attempted to do. So follow the framework because that private money is out there. You're not asking for money. You're offering an opportunity. And I think that's the biggest golden nugget of everything. So um, just wanted to recap it. You ready? Yep. Dictate, delegate, and disappear. <laughs> As simple as that, my friend. The triple D's, right? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, uh, by the way, guys, um, I'm also glad to give out if, if someone just wants to reach out to me at my office. Uh, my website mm -hmm. is yes. jayconner.com, J A Y C O N N E R.com. And we actually answer the telephone if anybody wants to call us up and talk real estate. Uh, nice. We're at, here in North Carolina, 252-808-2927. That's 252-808-2927. Very cool. Jay, really appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, hey, Jay. Hey, I tell you what, guys, love your energy, love your story, love your success. Thank you uh, so much for having me on. It's been a blast. Thanks. Thanks.